Okay, here we are, part seven, building my wood chunker. Today I'm gonna to be building the trailer frame that this thing is going to be sitting on. That's what I'm doing right here. Building an angle iron frame. Gonna be rolling in the axle here in just a second. Get it in place, get everything squared up, positioned, clamped down in place, measured out, square, get it, everything welded into place, ready to go underneath of the chunker. So this is what was left of that old motorcycle trailer. You can see why I robbed parts out of it. There's just, there's just nothing, nothing left. It's all rotted out. This is what I'm fearful that in a few years my gas fire will look like out here in Pacific Northwest. Man, it's getting out next to the ocean. There's a lot of salt. And this is what stuff looks like. This was a, uh, single uh, motorcycle trailer that a buddy of mine gave me didn't have a title so i butchered it cut it down into pieces robbed that axle i might rob the fenders off of it i don't know i need a reason to uh test out the new sand blaster maybe i can get those cleaned up and painted but that's why i robbed this axle out from underneath of that thing there was just no salvaging that trailer and this axle is good for 1750 pounds I think I don't think that Dana 60 with everything on it probably weighs maybe 500 so I shouldn't be working this axle too hard well when the forklift you need is waiting on parts you end up doing some pretty sketchy things with a floor jack and about I don't know 15 jack stands <laughs> finally got the thing on the trailer after dropping it three times trying to get it in place I have it set up that the axle and the trailer are parallel to each other the tongue is going to be on this side come out that will get brace boxed in make it nice and stout probably end up with a tongue jack out there going to have I'm thinking I'm gonna build stabilizers for the back of the trailer if I don't stabilize it at all then I might put a jack back there and be able to raise the chunker up and down. Um, but I have it at a fairly comfortable working height. That'll be a compromise for uh, keeping the load nice and low to the ground. I'm at 38 inches to the chunker, which for me is right at hand level. I'm not leaning over. I'm not having to pick anything up too high and I don't plan on chunking anything super heavy so I shouldn't be straining myself to lift the material up onto the chunker um, that leaves the back side of the chunker wide open and I can get a wheelbarrow underneath of it um, probably one of my smaller trash cans if I need to or I could put my little plastic sled underneath there chunk into that um, still have to build all the mounts, but I just have the very first one tacked in place right now. I moved the trailer as far back as I could, um, while having what's going to be the main two supports, uh, supported the best way on the frame rails, and then they will get triangulated in both sides might be a little tricky to uh, avoid the tire over there but I'll figure that out and then uh, yeah like I said put the tongue on brace that all in brace this all in and yeah I wasn't gonna video that I tried to after the first time dropping the axle I'm like okay I probably shouldn't put sketchy lifting of things on YouTube so uh, we'll, we'll uh, not video that section I'll just show you what I get done so here I've got the tongue off of that old motorcycle trailer getting it squared up, getting it locked down in place. I've got some of this uh, piping I'm gonna use for my angle braces. Bandsaw is just the best way to cut real nice clean edges, even if the vise is moving around a little bit. Get these angles cut in, ready for them to get fitted onto the trailer. Now that the tongue is tacked into place where I want it to be. You can see I spend plenty of time getting surfaces nice and clean, that's how I'd I think that's the best way to get real nice clean welds. 
See, I took my time here, made sure the angles are just right. This back brace over here, I fought this thing for a while trying to get it just right. Ended up having to take it over to the bandsaw and recut the angle just a little bit more because I was a little bit off, but ended up getting it finally cleaned up and in position the way I wanted it and tacked in place and ready for welding. Now that I've got those tacked in, I'm going to go ahead, go through, burn them all in. Okay, now I got that old trailer tongue that I salvaged out of the motorcycle trailer that we also salvaged the axle out of. Got that put in place, got it where I want it. Um, so these two braces are for side to side load and front and back load of the trailer, which is great for um, when it's going down the road. I've got a lot of strength this way, but I have a lot of weight hanging over the top. So I'm also gonna put a brace from that mount down to the tongue so I have strength this way and I'm still going to triangulate the axle down into the frame so that as it's going down the road I don't have this whole axle beating on the center of the trailer I want to spread the load out across the whole trailer that way I've got strength this way for towing I've got strength this way for chunking and I've got strength this way for any other type of load so this thing will be as solid as can be um, I don't think I mentioned before the frame is two inch by two inch angle quarter wall uh, Those four inch tubes are quarter wall same as the anvil that we made over there <clears throat> That tongue is pretty thin. I think it's maybe a little bit more than eighth inch Which I wasn't happy about but it's what I have to use and trying not to spend any money building this thing um, So that's why I'm doing it all out of scrap metal, you know scrap trailer scrap parts whatnot um, these two braces here are two by two uh, round corner box tube quarter wall so those will be nice and stout and that way I'm not relying on so much strength of that tongue except for that little what is it a I think a 16 inch section there as it comes out and the reason I went with the tongue underneath of the trailer frame because I was originally going to weld it on right there I decided to go underneath because then I could use the full length of that uh, tongue to give me a front to back brace for the trailer frame and a underneath brace for the chunker. So now I've got a formed square right there. So that's extremely strong shape. Uh, also, I use that tongue because it just happened to be that length. And I ended up with uh, 18 inches from that axle to the trailer ball and this trailer will more than likely only be towed by the wood burner that you just see poking out from behind the service truck over there. And uh, that's a low to the ground two wheel drive and um, my bumper ball where the trailer would sit is 13 and a half inches. And the trailer is sitting dead level right now and that tongue is sitting at 13. So when I drop the trailer on, technically it will be a little bit nose down which is perfect because the axle is still supported by a jack stand. So the trailer has no weight on it right now at all. When I take those two jack stands out from underneath, it will settle down onto the springs and it should sit right about dead level behind the truck. So here I flipped the trailer up, laid it on the back side of the chunker so I can get it underneath, finish up all the bottom welds on the tongue and the braces that go to it. Make sure everything is fully welded. Want this thing to be as strong as it can be. Okay, I got the trailer built. Got my triangulation braces put onto the back side. Those are uh, inch and a quarter, eighth wall tubing. A little lighter duty than I wanted, but their primary purpose is that when the trailer is going down the road the trailer isn't beating on the center of the trailer so that's taking a lot of the the weight of the axle and spreading it to the full width of the trailer that way I don't end up with this back uh, rail getting bowed down in now I don't think I'm actually gonna tow this thing that much but the mobility of having it on a trailer if I need to move it it's easy to move um, was kind of the reason for that um, I did not put the same braces on the front 
And the reason I didn't do that is after I got the tongue in place and I built um, these side braces to brace the tongue in for more strength this way and this way, I added in this uh, 3 16 inch and a half angle iron brace all the way down to the tongue. So now the load from this front post here is being transmitted down through the angle iron frame of the trailer onto the tongue. The tongue is split to the back and to the front, braced there, there, and there. And now I added this one in place, so this post really can't go anywhere because I've got three triangles built in front of it and then uh, effectively two squares for the frame rail in the back plus it's braced across the axle by the axle itself and then the load spread out with the back bars over there so it should be nice and stout um, what I'm really happy about it's not tongue heavy and it's not tail heavy it will get tail heavy if I tilt it back but as it is right now maybe well I don't know 10 pounds of effort to lift up on the tongue and granted it is very low to the ground it'll probably only ever get moved by the truck or if i need to shuffle it by hand i can pick it up by the tongue or the axle and just wheel it around wherever i need it to be <clears throat> so pretty happy with how it balanced out um everything stayed nice and parallel from the frame to the chunker assembly uh threw some paint across all the welds just to protect them because I don't care about the rust and whatnot because well if you know anything about guns rust is technically a protective surface that's what bluing is granted this is far from bluing but I don't care if it has a little bit of surface rust on it but I do want to protect the welds um, so yeah that's the chunker and the frame all done um, waiting to hear back from my brother who is bringing me the wore out carburetor for this so i can build my connection for the wood gas which will run along the tongue up to the truck that'll be over there to fuel the motor to power the chunker so hopefully the next episode is going to be this thing actually running and maybe chunking some wood thanks for watching guys